Okay, this is it. This is the Mount Ball Epic. This is a personal test piece. Mostly, like, just mental fortitude, because the bushwhack today is going to be not fun. Next hill! Oh. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. The worst of the climb's done. I'm 300 meters up. I think there's about 400 meters total for the bike ride. Uh, that is Mount Boom. That is Mount Winfer. And the smoke is clearing. Yeah, I'm... Uh, downhill now so that makes me very happy because because okay so i'm at uh, marble creek campground uh, obviously i don't have this campsite booked i have a bivy permit for somewhere back there so uh the plan is to eat lunch and then to bushwhack for five hours to get to the bivy site and then bivy that's five hours if I don't have any problems. I'm really excited just to get going. That bike ride in was amazing. That really got me kind of pumped up. It, it went really fast. Like it was just, it just flew by. It was like 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. It just flew by. It was amazing. I have the, uh, I downloaded uh, the GPX tracks from uh, previous parties. Uh, goes at this matches up with a trip report that I have. So I have a lot of information. I'm about as ready as I'm going to get um, once I eat my food which is leftover dinner from two days ago. So I'm excited for that. Yep. I am dressed most interestingly. I'm wearing my mountaineering hard shell pants and I am wearing my running clothes underneath that. Most importantly, to keep the bears away, I have my sense of humor. That will keep them away. It keeps most people away. So the high today is about 32 degrees. Uh, when I spoke to Parks, they said that the heat has been affecting people and they've had emergency calls uh, for people who had not been having enough electrolytes. I brought potato chips. Of course, this is a major summit of my life, so I um, always have potato chips for major summits. I am ready. I am I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's been a long time coming for this. I remember reading the route description for the first time and I'm like, that is so cool. Water shouldn't be an issue for the beginning of the adventure um, because I'm bushwhacking up Hafner Creek, which means I'll have to be even louder to perturb the bears because uh, of the noise from the creek. But like I said, my sense of humor should keep them away. The pants are gonna be a bit of a drag, but it's gonna be better than being destroyed by the brush. So that's my story. <sighs> okay. I'm going to lock the bike up and get going. Bike is ditched. All right, this is gonna be like terrible. Even like Parks was like, you know it's bad, right? In there, the approach is terrible. I'm like, yeah, yeah I know. Book, uh, Scram Kane Scrambling book gives a description saying that he never wanted to do it again and he's a seasoned mountaineer. But humble beginnings, right? This is great. This is like, look at this. We're moving, we're going. Oh God, look, there's trees all over the trail already. Yeah! Yeah! I'm gonna keep moving and I will give an update when things get worse, which is gonna be any minute now because this road ends abruptly, I'm told. Very abruptly. That's one log. Can we count how many logs I go over? Let's count how many logs I go over. Two, three. Does that count as two or is that one? Four, five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Six. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. <laughs> Seven. Yeah, I've lost my mind. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. Here we go some good people in the world. You hear that bear? There's some good people in the world. I hear there's grizzlies around here. Anyway, um, play dead? I'm coming, Mr. Bear! Yep, my sense of humor is gonna keep me alive. <laughs> what is that, 30, 31, 32, 33? 33, how many of you stepped over, Mr. Bear? What the hell? Okay. This is amazing. Why do people hate this? Maybe it sucked 10 years ago. 
Yeah. Look at it. It's so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get eaten by a bear. Okay. So it looks like I got to be up there somewhere. Um, obviously. Yeah, I don't know where people tend to go here. There's boot prints to here, but I guess they did the same thing I did as they just followed someone else. So I'm going to go get up on there. There's actually no... I haven't seen flagging since I passed the toilet. Although there's a chain there. Oh, no. Why are those logs chained together? Why are those logs chained together? This is... This is... This is... This, this ladies and gentlemen, is infrastructure. This is... I'm gonna cross this and we're gonna see what happens. This is epic! Oh my god! <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, oh, it's so cold in here. It's so nice. It's like 20 degrees hotter out there. That. That log looks like someone hammered it with a sledgehammer to get it there. So I'm gonna go over that log and cross over there. Okay, let, let's do it, let's do it. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> hates this like this is amazing okay this this is sketchy i'm gonna get some poles out for this and uh yeah Oh boy. Okay, now I'm a little confused. Okay, so that was a route to the crag that someone was making. I had to climb out, it was hard. But this is the flagging for Stanley Peak Mount Ball. So this makes a lot more sense. Some people trying to develop a crag would go in with chainsaws and clear out brush and clean everything up and try to make it easy and chain up logs and that's what the rappel rings are for. I found bolts. Um, so I climbed up, I guess one of the roots, um, topped off, which was hard. And now it looks like I am actually on the trail, which is this, which makes sense based on the descriptions I've got. Now I'm super grateful that I got that awesome beginning section because this was the whole thing. Now this is the route. So hopefully this flagging is close enough together that I don't get off trail. Um, and yeah, it would have been good to know that there was a crag there because I would not have followed that particular route. So with the help of some maps and some free soloing, I'm back on route. That was pretty high grades on unclimbed rock. Some of it was unclimbed rock, so it was very loose. And Exciting. I think I've learned my lesson though. <laughs> Slow down and stop enjoying yourself because what you signed up for is probably worse than what you're experiencing. Hey, okay, I'm kind of back into it now. Yeah, so it is not great. <laughs> uh, that's Vermilion. I don't know what that is. That's Stanley. And this is the trail. So, it's a little bushwhacky and prickly, mostly prickly. You go 10 feet and then you don't know where you are again.
Always slightly reassuring. Those are mine, those are not. They are old, but yeah. Feeling better about the whole thing now. It's been an emotional roller coaster so far. As you can see, this is very broken terrain. This is not, it's beautiful in its own way. All the bark's gone, it's, just, it's beautiful in its own way, all these like natural little dams. But, God, is it is it slow? And is it mentally taxing? Like, like now what am I supposed to do? But I'm having a lot of fun. And it is it is absolutely stunning. It's actually really cool. Now as I move up, that log didn't want to be there. It's happy where it is now. As they move up Hafner Creek, obviously the flow reduces, and I should get to the top and there should be like just a dribble coming down from the glacier, and that's what I'll drink out of. It's kind of cool to see it collect and build. Um, you know, at the road it's, mighty uh, but up here it's already starting to be not too intense anyway it is gorgeous here like, it is remote and it is really rugged it is really hard to move i'm basically just like walking on logs but now i'm like well now what do i do because it's like side hilling and loose rocks and anyway yeah so it's good i'm I can't believe how high my heart rate is. I guess I'm jumping around a lot. I'm probably making good time, but I don't know because I'm bushwhacking and I really don't know. It's like a kilometer an hour. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. It's really hard. It's really hard, but it's really fun. If you just, you know what you're in for and you expect it. But this is, this is gorgeous. Like this is, like the trees are all dead and it's really sad, but they're beautiful in their own right. They're like fallen soldiers, just standing there saluting. It's quite, it's quite beautiful, actually. That was quite poetic. Yeah. I really love it here. This is really nice. I'm really happy here. Ooh, chipmunk! I lost my bear bell. Who'd have thunk it would fall off bushwhacking? Um, yeah, so I hope whoever finds it thinks I got eaten, because that's hilarious. They'd be like, oh my God, all this left is the bear belt. And then they turn around and they don't have to deal with this. Oh yeah, alder, it's everywhere, it tries to kill you. It's my best friend, I hold on to it when I walk on the logs. We hold hands. It's really quite romantic. Okay, I'm losing my mind, so I'm gonna keep moving. There you go, so this is the type of terrain we're dealing with now. Beautiful fireweed, uh, beautiful in their own right, dead logs. Um, yeah, so I'm probably, I don't even know where I'm going. I don't know why I'm calling it a trail, it's not a trail. It's actually really nice. I mean, it sucks, but it's like fun in its own way, you know? To this, knowing it was going to be terrible. And then it was like really good. And I'm like, wow, this is great. Ah, I hope the whole thing's like this good. But then I realized I was on the wrong trail and I ended up getting clipped up. So then I did like some 5.9 soloing, which was not a good idea with a pack. Okay, so it's not like this when I'm not talking to the camera. Like when I'm not talking to the camera, it's like smooth sailing, you know? This is your fault, not mine. So, um, moral of the story is it's been a great day, despite being whacked in the face by a lot of stuff. Yeah, this is amazing. I'm almost in the upper valley. There's a massive head wall there, massive. Grasshoppers are adorable. That's always what's so cool about the mountains. They, they're kind of an interesting nexus in time. They only exist in their current form in that moment because they're always changing. When you're there, get a sense of past and present and future so they're very I don't know I don't know summits are uh, I don't care what people say summits are special being in the Alpine is special getting to the top of a climb well it's not what it's about getting down 
and back safely is what it's about. But summits are special. This one's going to be very special. This is what I'm dealing with. I think I'll jump on this log, walk across it, walk across that, and walk across that. This is my route finding for the trip. So I was walking somewhere over there and heard some water running and I found this. It's pretty silty but it's the only water I've been close to for the last like hour and a half. I'm concerned that the water is going to run underground and then obviously it won't be accessible to me. We are at the headwalls. You can see we have one cliff band and then another cliff band. I guess that's less steep than that. Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. So, lost to the bushwhacking here. And I'm in the upper valley. The upper valley is where I bivy. This is the head wall. The route is straight ahead. Apparently, it's not as bad as it looks. So, I am bushwhacking through, I don't know, there's, I mean, they don't have thorns and they're quite beautiful. So, like, how can I complain about that? That's still epic. Another cave there. Also epic. Yeah, this whole valley is pretty, pretty epic. I mean, <laughs> Mount Hefner. Hefner. <laughs> the, the, the waterfall's coming out of the, the rock. That's so cool. This is a gorgeous valley. I don't know. Uh, it's a special one. That wasn't that bad. That really wasn't that bad. I mean, I probably look worse for wear. I mean, it's been a long day, I'm tired, but... Wow. That's an accomplishment. I started at the base of that mountain. It's quite, quite an accomplishment. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. Being out here does something for you. It teaches you things teaches you things about yourself. I don't know what it is, I can't put it into words, but I think it's that I can't keep myself in frame when I'm not looking directly at the camera. I have to keep it up, up, out. I'm almost there. Uh, the nut attack's behind me. Is it still a nut attack if it's not glaciated around it? You still call it a nut attack? I don't know. The once was nut attack is behind me and there's some caves in there. So Nate, maybe you were right. Maybe maybe like Barry I should, uh, should be in the cave. So behind me is home somewhere. And indeed, the entire ridge is snow free. Um, I saw even from 2014, pictures of it being snowed. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be scramble, not necessarily, um, uh, I don't need my, micro, my, my traction device and my um, ice axe that I brought, just in case. You see how much the glaciers have melted since the pictures I've seen. Okay, I didn't film it because it was kind of frantic, but I've arrived at the bivy site. There's a corral there. The wind is blowing up this way. The corral kind of helps. There's another spot back here behind these rocks that might work if it gets really windy. Um, it's been drizzling. so I'm concerned that there's a storm. The more concerning thing was that the usual water runnel, which comes out of this rock somewhere, wasn't there's no water so i just spent a bunch of time i ran up on this medial moraine 
um, and scouted over to see if there was water over there. There's a pool probably two kilometers that way. Um, and then it disappears into the rock, which was my concern. Uh, and then the creek bed is completely dry below. But um, I was kind of rummaging around here and I heard some trickling and I followed it and followed it and followed it and I found and I built a cairn. But there is a little bit of flowing water. Uh, and this is the only spot you can get to it because it's buried under rocks there, it's buried under rocks there, and then it disappears um, into the ground again, uh, into the scree further back. So this is the only spot that this has water. Let's have a look. So the ground's kind of wet here because it's mossy. But I do fit in here. It's kind of uneven, but we can fix that. And this is probably more protected from the wind. I think I'm setting up here. But it, it's cooling down. Um, it's kind of go time here to get kind of hunkered down. I don't know what the weather's going to do, but I know it's going to get colder. So as is normal, it's never easy. So I finally got the water and then it's, it's raining now. It's not bad. I got the tarp up, so I have some shelter. I'm not thrilled with how it is. If it rains hard and the wind comes this way, the rock will block the wind, but the tarp is not as going, some of the rain's gonna bypass the tarp. So um, I might do a little bit of a reconfigure. <laughs> what have I got myself into? Okay, uh, this will be an interesting night. An interesting night. Ooh, I don't look so good. It's um, 8.30. I got the tarp set up how I, as good as I'm going to be able to get it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It might have been better by the Bivy Corral. I don't know. Um, really, a tent would be great right now. Yeah, because this, this was really a challenge for me. It didn't help that it was raining, so. It still is raining, as I'm sure you can hear. I have to eat dinner still. Um, I'm fairly happy with this. Yeah, but um, I don't even have the map down right now, and I'm pretty, pretty comfortable on the moss. Yeah, it'd be nice to... Um, Eat. I should do that. Yeah. Really wish it would stop raining. That would be really nice. Yeah. All right. It's uh, almost eleven o'clock, and I'm just about holed up for the night. We'll see how this goes. Uh, might uh, I give you updates in the middle of the night? It's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens.